if you notice here, I'm showing the top of the, well, the valley, here you go, the valley's over here, et cetera, right? Now, the grinding here came from the factory, but this over here, although it was notched like this guy over here, had to be extended. Why in the world did it have to be extended? Well, because of the angle. If you look at this, see where the, the assembly is right here? It doesn't quite line up in the center here. And yeah, we probably could have gone with different ones, but these are 440 lifters. These were probably the best ones, and this is what the builder wanted to go with, so we're going to go with that. So in order to accommodate that, we had to go ahead and notch out on each intake side, a little gap there, a little extra gap. So as I mentioned during our little segment or opening segment, uh, Dan has been really, really busy uh, while I was gone on vacation. In fact, um, he was compelled to do a couple different things. Obviously, when we had to go ahead and tap the um, holes for the uh, studs for the pan, okay, there was a lot of extra metal shavings and he didn't like where those went off. He went ahead and uh, decided to disassemble everything that was done, clean, again, second cleaning, just like you saw on the other video, and then reassemble everything, all right? That allowed him to get his measurements in, that allowed him to get all the stuff done, allowed to get the uh, cutting of the uh, push rods and get everything set. So yeah, he was quite, quite busy on the assembly. Now what we're doing now is we're simply taking off the rocker arm assembly because we have to change out those springs. And we got a specialty tool so that you don't have to get one of those big bench pneumatic things to change these things out. We got something that you could do this while the engine is still on the car in the event that you break a spring. So we're going to show you that here in a few moments. Now, if you're thinking, wait a minute, wait a minute, why did we go ahead and, and, and set the, uh, the, the, the bolts to torque spec and so on and so forth? It was just done temporarily. Well, that's part of the engine building process. You see, we wouldn't have known about the grinding that was needed, okay, and uh, so, so forth. So you assemble the engine as if you're assembling it, get the torque specs down right, okay, then you could see where things are at, okay. If you hadn't gone through that process, you, you're going to need to use assembly lube because you're, tur you're turning things. You're going to need to torque things down to spec because of the crushing that's needed on the uh, gaskets. So all those things need to be done in effort to make sure that you get the correct information. Additionally, all right, um, he went ahead and was unhappy with the way that the bushings were sitting out of the lifter bores. So we went ahead and moved those in about an eighth of an inch and then had to rebore those because when those were bored initially, they were bored based off of the uh, metal around them. So they had, when you push them in, it kind of compressed some things. So we had to re, re um, honed the um, lifter bores uh, themselves, those brass fittings. So that's where we're at. And uh, yeah, here we go with the specialty tool. This is a LSM uh, racing products tool. It's designed to be able to change the uh, springs while it's still on the motor. It can be done while it's off the motor as well. This one has to have a special plate that fits on the LA heads that bolts directly into the bolt pattern that's used to hold down the, the uh, rocker. So you just put on bolt. <laughs> has a flanged bolt. So that goes right into the uh, rocker arm camshaft hole? Yep. On both sides. I'm taking these lightweight ones off. It's a piece of cake. <laughs> Putting the new ones on, not a piece of cake. They actually produce a huge amount of pressure. That's right, you had to change out the springs because the uh, recommend you were exceeding the recommendation by about how many thousandths were you exceeding that? Uh, 18 thousandths. 18 thousandths, so you didn't want to take a risk. Didn't want to risk it. Didn't want to risk it. The, the springs were stated to go ahead and handle that kind of additional lift but you decided, nah, you wanted to go with uh, something a little bit beefier. And what are these springs rated up as far as the overall compression? How big um, of a lift can you go? Um, 0.750. Oh my, so you can go for three quarter these, cam. This is designed for a three quarter lift. Crazy. Which puts us well within specifications with a 680. Yeah.
I'm kind of curious to see how this thing works myself. This is interesting. Now we've got number one cylinder at top dead center. So the um, lifters will not fall down in the cylinder hole. Oh, so when you do this one, you make sure that your top dead center on the cylinder that you're actually doing the work on. Okay. This slides back and forth so it reaches over the top of each one. And it does, it's adjustable so you line up directly with the uh, spring itself. Now, when you're pushing down a fully loaded spring like this one, you'll want to tap on it as soon as it goes on there so it'll break loose here. Otherwise, you're putting too much pressure on this. But with it's where it's sit right now, of course, I could push this one down by hand. Yeah, yeah, those are lightweight springs. Yeah. And you got the seat you got to pull off there, huh? Yeah, the keepers. Keepers, my bad. Pull the keepers off. Keepers are magnetic. And they, we did have to change these to 10 degree in order to change the springs. So off goes up. the keepers. This just slides out of the way. This is being still used on the new ones. That's just a test spring. These are the big boys. All right. They fit in there in these heads exactly perfect. This goes into place. Of course, it's considerably higher. Slide this back over the top. Line it up. Now, it's a little bit more force to bring these down. And you said you had to tap on it at some point? No, when you're taking them off. Only when you take them off, okay. Yeah, right now we're just getting it down low enough that we can get the keepers in place. Put a keeper on each side. Make sure that you got the high side up, narrow side down. Okay. In place. So moving it down and getting seated. Gotta get that keeper in place. place. Cool. And there it is. Man, just that, that easy. That looks easy. Check and make sure they're seated good. Yeah, that's a whole lot better than having to take the whole head off use the uh, C-clamp tool, the pneumatic one that pushes down on the spring that they, you know, put the valves and such in. And, and you have something for race day just in case you ever break the spring.
There you go. Cool.